Hey guys, it's Danny Burke. I'm with Winnie Sun at the Renegade Millionaire Show. What's up, y'all? This is Chitty Bang, and I'm on the Renegade Millionaire Show, the podcast that profiles entrepreneurs, founders, and CEOs. Join us as we go one-on-one inside the hearts and minds of some of our generation's best and brightest. And now, introducing your host, my friend, Sun Group Wealth Partners Managing Director, CNBC and Forbes.com contributor, Winnie Sun. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. We're excited. Today we are trying something completely new. We are here at beautiful TuneIn Studios for the Renegade Millionaire Show. I am your host, Winnie Sun. Once again, Managing Director, Financial Advisor at Sun Group Wealth Partners in beautiful, sunny California. And we are going to be transitioning our awesome tune in podcast show we are now going to be going mostly to uh video and so with that we are kicking it off with my friend danny burke <laughs> danny burke what's up danny i'm feeling good I'm, we're here we're live and i'm psyched to be here yeah <laughs> and you know danny this is perfect for you because you know it, it's funny i gotta kind of give you guys like a little bit of history danny's dad and i have known each other for a few years but we, we were talking about this project that I'm going to be doing um, for my F- Forbes contribution series called the Millennial Study. And, you know, we were talking, I was like, and I found out about you and what you've been doing. I thought you have to be on this show. And so thank you for joining us today. No, no, thank you. What's up? You like it? <laughs> oh, I'm stoked. Love it. <laughs> well, so Danny, let's talk about let's talk about the, the you know, the show is Renegade Millionaire and people are wanna we wanna be inspired by you and and even though you are just a, a very old, 21 years old, <laughs> you've done so much in your life. In fact, you were a semi pro surfer. Yes, I've been I've been Started surfing at 12 years old and been obsessed ever since and been competing in professional contests, I think from like, thir- started like probably like 13 maybe. Wow. And then I actually just got into the Cold Water Classic, which is a huge event, and it's in Santa Cruz next week. Starts on the 14th to the 18th. Wow. Very cool. So we'll be able to see you surf still. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you've been doing that for a very long time. In fact, I heard you you actually have some like like some war um experiences you've actually gotten hurt meaning you had to have surgery right for yeah. this uh well, i've had surgeries for skateboarding okay but i've gotten hurt surfing when i was in indonesia i remember like i fell on this wave and it's probably it's one of the best waves in the world reef is just so shallow sharp reef and i fell and did like a couple twirls elbow goes straight in the reef come up all bleeding all over oh, my man. elbow like to get back on the beach you gotta it's far so I'm swimming in, my board's broken, and get in all bloody. Uh, like one of those Indo guys, like pour, scrubbing lime on you to get the bacteria, and it just stings. And it, I don't know. Okay, we don't want to go into much detail. Yeah, Talk freaking people. Out. All right, all right. <laughs> so, sorry guys. <laughs> but so yeah, you're you're a pretty awesome surfer. But that's not the most of it. The coolest thing, and why we want to talk to you is I. At being an older lady now, I want to learn all about your new world. So Danny is a full-blown Snapchat influencer. Can we talk about what you did in New York City? I thought that was so much fun. As someone who goes to New York, I, I was just in New York last week. And I was thinking about you the whole trip. Because I was thinking, oh, I wonder which pizza place tastes best. So let's talk about what you did. So it was hosted by Kevin Jonas, one of the Jonas Brothers. And then I get an email from the, from the main guy going, hey... Would you like to fill in for Kevin Jonas? He can't host this week. Oh, and, maybe. Uh, yeah, I'm going to host. <laughs> so I did it. They loved it. I don't know. If you guys knew who I was, I have a lot of energy. I don't even drink coffee. It's just it's just how I act. I just love life. Natural energy. Surfing where I froth on life. So I uh, filled in a couple more times, and then they kind of said we're doing it something different, and we kind of want you to take over Kevin's uh, – like, not not take over. I'm not – it was a whole different situation with that, but – just kind of, we add want you to new, f- we, add some new energy. Yeah, we want you to be the new guy for this week in Snapchat. So, I was in Virginia Beach for a surf contest, and I know New York's like really close flight. So, I called the guy, hey, I'd love to meet you guys. Bam. They're like, oh, we definitely need to get a photo shoot done with you. So, I go to New York, uh, I get a photo shoot done, I meet the whole crew in the studio. It was, it was awesome. And then they're thinking, what should we do for this week in Snapchat? And they're like, let's just make it about you this week of trying to find the best slice of pizza. And 
I like any kind of pizza. I mean, it's pizza, but the theme was I did not find the best slice, and the episode was I didn't find the best slice, and then the, we, we, we did that so um, people would send Snapchats to us of where they like uh, to get their best slice of pizza, and then the next episode after that, that, that was... The anticipation of what piece, so that people would like yeah. make their own insight, right? I love that. Yeah, it was, it was pretty fun. So you're actually getting people on the street adding like their little their little flavor on their pizza. Yeah. Inside. Very cool. So you can always do that any part of the country. I love that. It was fun. And that's just something we should talk about because there's a lot of people that do social media and do Snapchat and do everything else, but you're doing it for business. And this is your career. Your dad said, you know, when you know, he is doing this as his <laughs> career. So what makes you what makes you different from all the other um, millions of people on social media? Uh, probably because I, I, don't, I don't know. I kind of just – what I do on Snapchat is kind of how I act all the time and maybe – I kind of mix the surfing in there and just the way I act. I told you, like, a lot of energy. I love life. I have catchphrases. That's why in the beginning I was like, we're here. We're live. That's one of my catchphrases. I also <laughs> say other weird stuff. I don't know. you got to follow me on Snapchat to see. Oh, for sure. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I, I just kind of do what I do, and I don't care what people think at all. And then people started liking it, and then I developed a following on Snapchat, and now it's now it's going it's going pretty well. How so? How big a following do you have on Snapchat? Uh, to be honest, I don't like to say okay. where, what my following. You gotta, hey, you but gotta. I'll give you a hint. It's between because I'm, I'm just starting to blow up, so it's between two thousand to ten thousand. Maybe Sweet. maybe maybe around the middle. We'll, we'll, I don't well know. maybe after this, it'll like jump up even yeah, yeah. more. So let's let like what's next? I mean, one thing can can you share this because I, I I love this because a lot of millennials. What, part of our millennial study we found is millennials all want to. They love social media. They understand it. They appreciate it, and they all want to be. Oh, not a, a, a not all of them, but a lot of them want to be entrepreneurs like yourself. And so you've taken something that's very current, which is Snapchat, and a marketing interest, and just just using your own natural personality to develop a career for yourself. And I know that you're now looking at bigger things. We've we had a conversation offline about going after large companies and different more traditional industries that you feel that you could really make an impact. Right. So for other millennials who are looking at you like, oh, wow, I want to do what Danny's doing. What are some what are some things you've learned along the way? Uh, I just thought believe in yourself. Like I said, don't care what people think. Just do you do. If you do what you do, good things are going to happen. I don't know. The, the way it happened, what I was doing is I just was doing my Snapchats. And one girl was like, oh, you, you could for sure make it a snap famous. So I Googled it. I didn't even know it was a thing. Looked up Sean Durris, one of my favorite snappers, by the way. He's the biggest, and he's the Snapchat king, Snapchat god. Snapchat god, okay. And then I just, I don't know, I just tried to just keep doing what I was doing, made a Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter, and just got my name out. And then I was in Bali. I got back June 10th. Right when I got back is when good things were happening for me. I got on an article right when I got back for uh, the top 13 Snapchat stars you need to follow. Sweet. So that was Sweet. awesome. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that seems like the, the very, very popular show. Tell us, for those of us who don't know how Snapchat works, how does this work? What do you do? I've seen it. I mean, when you came in here, you were kind of doing s some snippets of video. Yeah. So Snapchat, it's an app on your phone. Just download it. And it's, it's basically you can send 10 seconds to 10 second videos to one to 10 second photos to either one of your friends or whatever, and then they can get it and it goes away. But if you want to do it how I do it, you post it on your Snapchat story, and then it's up for 24 hours. And like what I kind of like to do, I like to kind of pick a theme. Like say I'm at the, the baseball, I'm at a baseball game, and then that's the whole theme of the day. I'm just doing a baseball theme Snapchat story. That's just how I do it. And then it's up for 24 hours, and then after 24 hours, it's gone, and then people can't see it again unless you're, you're, you're able to save it, though. So I've been saving mine and YouTubing them as well. Oh, that's cool. So, uh, oh, you save them. And yeah. You, so it's like, I guess when I saw you do it, it, to me, it felt like the the Twitter of YouTube. Do you think that's accurate? Sort of, kind of? Uh, and maybe not. <laughs> I, I just got, I, I'm new to Twitter, right? Don't judge me. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I'm not that new. I just, I don't. I love Twitter, so. Yeah, I know. Twitter's cool. I don't, I don't know. 
that's different because uh, I don't know about that. Well, we'll figure that yeah, out. Yeah. Well, we'll talk more about it. Hey, Woody's that. always right, so I'm going to believe. I'm gonna believe Aww. Yeah. <laughs> well, this millennial study we're doing, I'm super excited about. So we're, we're in, so I, I got to share this with you, Danny. We're, we're doing like interviews like this with you with different like movers and shakers in the millennial space all over the country. So I just came back from New York. We did like eight interviews. It's going to be off the chart. So this is going to, this is going to be obviously a video series and we're going to put you in a book and a lot of fun stuff. So you get to stay tuned. What? Yeah. This is cool. <laughs> it's going to be cool. We're going to mix traditional with, you know, the new up and coming. So let's talk about that. One thing I, I was really impressed about is that you do charity work as well. You give back, which is something that I really want to highlight because I, you know, we hear a lot of millennials um, doing good online, socially. They push social initiatives. They're excited about social causes, but we don't see a lot of them roll up their th- sleeves and get down to work, but you actually do. So can you talk a little bit about what you do? I mean, I, I did get a call um, from UNICEF um, and I actually did a Snapchat story for them for um, just kind of promoting what they were doing. Mm-hmm. And I donated some money too. And I was actually going to send a huge, huge, like probably eight foot teddy bear over to them. Oh, Costco. And, <laughs> no, no, actually from a huge uh, bear company called BigPlush.com. They said giant, Aww. giant stuffed animals. Awesome. But they turned it down because I they, they, it would just be too much money to ship and everything. I was bummed on it. I wanted to see a kid's face just with a huge smile, but donated money, made a good Snapchat story, got some really good feedback from it. It was really cool. So, And it, that was no pay. I was doing that for just, just the sake of doing that, like just good, good-hearted thing. Yeah, and that's great because you can do it your way, uh, what's convenient for you, but you can make a difference. Yeah. You know, and everyone can do it in their own little way. I actually wish I did that now because I have a bigger following now, and that would have been way cooler to get more there's, people. There's known still time. Yeah, there's still time. There's still time. There's still time. <laughs> and I, I got to set you up with somebody that will be, it'll be amazing. I'm into it. Yeah, so what's next? What's next on the horizon for you? Next is... Hopefully getting some more gigs. I've been working with an agency called Del Mondo. They basically get Snapchatters, like Snapchat influencers with the biggest brands. So Nick Cicero, one of the CEOs from Del Mondo, calls me up. Hey, I got you a gig. Are you free? This uh, it was literally a couple weekends ago. I got flown out to Seattle to take over Cinnabon's Snapchat account for the 30th anniversary. <laughs> I love that. It was awesome. <laughs> Oh, that must have been a yeah. tasty gig, huh? Oh, my, oh, I I think I got gained a little weight from that, but it was so good. But the coolest thing was I got to collab with an amazing Snapchat artist, E.M. Garber. If you guys want to check him out, it's just E.M. Garber. He is an amazing Snapchat artist, and I've always wanted to meet him. He lives in Boston. Now we bond, and we're kind of best friends now. But Oh, yeah. It's really, it's really cool. Your so. Snapchat BFF. Yeah. Very cool. And that's nice because it seems like it's a very collaborative effort like, yeah because you, you work together and there's no reason why you both can't be huge yeah right? and then a couple of things before that i took over the world surf league snapchat account at the u.s open of surfing which i mean surfing's my life so that that was that, that was, was that, that was an honor to do that because i was in the u.s open not this year i was in it last year i didn't do really well like really well at all i don't want to talk about it but this year to take over the Snapchat account, that was awesome. Then I got to take it over again at the Hurley Pro in San Clemente at Lower Trestles. And I got to collab with another Snapchat artist. And I don't know, things have been going pretty well. Yeah, I, for sure. And you're a whopping 21 years old. Yeah. That's pretty great. <laughs> so you got to make sure, and you know this is your financial friend, you got to make sure to put money aside for yourself for retirement, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, this is great. And I really got to thank um, my best friend, Slea Snap. I wouldn't be the Snapchatter I am today if it wasn't for her. She's believed in me and given me the best advice ever. And she's an amazing Snap artist. So you guys got to check her out. Slea Snap. <laughs> I, I can't even keep track of all these names. So I'm sure you can't either. So we'll make sure to get all these from yeah. you and list them on our YouTube video yeah. down below so you can follow all these amazing Snapchat artists. Yeah. I'm going to have to become one of these because I want to hang out with the cool kids. Right? Susie's thinking, yeah. Hey, but the person that started my career, cause he he get, he kind of boosted my following. People kind of got like, oh, now I know who Danny Burke is. So this guy, his name is Mark K. And he has a show on Snapchat called Talk and Snap with Mark K. Yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> he basically interviews famous Snapchatters, like big ones. Like he had Kevin Jonas. He's had Sean Durris, the guy that said the god of Snapchat. And I got an email from one day saying, I want you to be on my show. And I was like, what? Is this real life right now? So we did a whole show. It was awesome. <laughs> I obviously got to shut myself out. Got, a, got more followers. It was really cool. Mark K is now my good friend. We talk all the time. He's the man. I don't know. 
just this whole Snapchat community is awesome. I feel like we've all – there's a bunch I, don't, I haven't even met yet like Mark K and we talk all the time and we're like buddies. It's, so you talk – do you actually talk talk or do you Snapchat talk? Oh, no. We talk. We, we talk like on, on Facebook. Phone? We talk on the phone. We text. I don't know. We're just all, com- all community. I mean, I met Celia. And now she's my best friend. We met on Snapchat. She reached out to me on Snapchat. I was like, what's your number? I'll call you. And now we've been collaborating. And now we're buddies. Wow. Very yeah. cool. And so th- w- these, this community that you're with, what's the average age, would you say, of your buds on Snapchat? Uh I would say me, me and another snap artist are the youngest. Like I'm 21, another snap artist is 19, and the rest are kind of like, kind of mid 20s, 20 maybe 24 um, to like 28. Wow, very cool. So those of you who are interested, I know we talk to businesses all the time that are interested in reaching this demographics. They're on Snapchat. Yeah. So but for demographics for Snapchat though, that mm-hmm. ranges from like probably 13 to like 28. Wow. 25, maybe, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of young people that I know that follow me. Wow, very fun, very yeah. fun. Well, awesome. It has been a true pleasure, and I've enjoyed this interview so much. So we definitely have to stay in touch, and I'm going to make sure that we get hooked up on Snapchat and everything else. Um, so let's go ahead and do a shout-out. Let's go ahead and get everybody um, your – we know Danny Burke, is it everything? Is Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Snapchat, everything yeah. the same? Uh, every, uh, except for my Instagram. So – Snapchat, Twitter, um, LinkedIn, all that stuff. That's just Danny Burke, one more, one word, D-A-N-N-Y-B-E-R-K. Don't do B-U-R-K-E, all right? That's just not how you do it. It's B-E-R-K. And then my Instagram is underscore Danny Burke. Okay. Well, that makes it easy enough. And you can follow me on Twitter. I'm really active at Sun Group WP. And I'm on Facebook, LinkedIn, and all that good stuff. And we want to give a really quick shout out to my very, very good, Dear good friend in the back, our producer, Kevin. And you can follow Kevin uh, on Twitter at Audio Lives. So we encourage you to do so because he is one amazing artist. Uh, he makes some incredible music. And not only that, he's got a heart of gold. So we have so appreciated working with him because we're doing a slightly different variation. We're actually going to take this show on the road now. So we're not going to be so much in the studio. We're going to go to places where the people do what they do. And uh, so we're going to tell some more stories via video because we really enjoy video. So we're going to have to continue to follow your story for sure. Yes, follow my life, follow my story. Yeah. (laughs) Cool. Well, with that, uh, this is Winnie Sun again with the Renegade Millionaire Show. Thank you again for tuning in. It has been an absolute pleasure. And uh, make sure to follow us down below on YouTube and tune in, all that good stuff. And we will come and see you next time.